Welcome back to the Dota 2 Asian Championship powered by the Score Esports. We're getting there, boys. This is the match that's going to see who's out and get fourth place and who's going to get to the podium, to the top three. We have Secret versus Big God. Two different stories, Secret unbeaten in the group stage, showed signs of weakness playing against Vichy Gaming and most surprisingly Cloud9. And the same for Big God. They showed a lot of weakness against Rave. Rave did play well, but both of these teams had opportunities to win games cleanly to close them out, and they were unable to do so. And they come into this match looking vulnerable. Yeah, absolutely. And um, it's also different in the sense that one is the team that has all the Western stars combined into this self-made team, thirsty for victories and triumph of a lot of experiences, failed TI. The other, a team of equally strong stars, but just playing for fun. Or that's what they say. Are they playing for fun these days? I, be I believed it in the start. I don't anymore. I believed it going into the tournament, and then I saw how they performed. And I think when you when you see how far you can actually get, I think they started taking it seriously, like after day one, maybe even, or after day two. Right. Maybe they didn't prepare as much. Maybe they didn't team house or boot camp, but I, they're not messing around. They're playing to win. Yeah, and uh, Winter, would you like to play for fun and have guaranteed two hundred and ten thousand dollars? Yes, please, Bruno. Yes, because that's what the fourth place is going to get. It's a three million dollar total prize pool for this. It's one point two five million for the first place. Uh, fourth place guarantees two two ten two seventy two hundred seventy thousand for third place and three hundred and sixty thousand for second place. So top heavy. It actually doesn't go up that much until you get to first. Like fir yes. the difference between second, third, and fourth is quite small. So. Yes. I mean, end of the day, you win this match, you're not going to be satisfied then. you got to get to the grand finals and fight for that $1 million plus mm -hmm. prize pool. So looking at Big God, um, we saw a lot of picks from them, but they really like that Witch Doctor. That's their go-to support, the 10 and 3 within. Actually won them the game, um, I would say, because the, yeah. the, the cask allowed Bernie to get off his Omni Slash when he did not have buyback. It bounced between two Wasn't heroes. was that a Centaur Blink Stomp? I think there was a cast that bounced. There was a cast well. too. Yeah. He had okay. 60 health. He was okay. so close to that dying. That was extremely back. lucky. Yeah. yeah. They also have the Tie Hunter, which they favor, even though ROTK has some bad experiences with the hero. He also had some great games. Uh, on the side of Secret, what do we remember from them? They have the Shadow Finch hand. They like their Lycan on Arteezy. But recently, they've been experimenting a little bit more, right? Yeah, we've seen them run Tiny Wisp. They ended up losing that game, but, I mean, Mega Creeps against Fiji Gaming mm -hmm. probably should... You play that game nine ti ten times, they probably win it nine times. And looked good overall with the duo. And I think the key hero for me that sh probably won't ambush Big God, but something they don't want to forget about is the Broodmother for Zai. Because Big God do not run that hero at all. I don't think I've seen them run it once. No, RTK doesn't play that hero. It's generally yeah. something the Chinese teams were banning. I'd say second phase. Sometimes they ban it the last phase if the enemy offlaner has not been picked, but... They have to be careful not to be, get ambushed by it because a Broodmother pick out of nowhere can just instantly win Secret a game. Winter, remember that um, oh we're going to go into the draft right now and let's take a look at the draft. I, I still want to emphasize this point. Remember that Broodmother was uh, removed from Captain's mode for over two years, I want to say, like at least a year and a half. And people were saying, well, Broodmother is a hard pick because it's very easy to counter. It's very easy to counter. Like you get a Sun King, you get anything with AoE, and suddenly Broodmother is giving a lot of call. Do you think that's the case actually? Well, there's, certain, uh, there's certainly a uh, an amount of truth to that statement, but at the same time, in a team game, it's totally different. You Sometimes you can't, if you catch your opponent by surprise, they can't adjust the draft to actually have a certain hero to specifically counter the brood, and it doesn't, you know, it doesn't work like this all the time. And if they have to commit more than one hero, obviously that's what you want. Like, if even if the enemy can counter the brood, it forces a lot of resources being put on the boat, I, I think it's still fine as a hero. He just creates so much space for his team. Fair enough. And we see the Bat Rider and Earthshaker are going to be picked by Team Secret. Kind of an unusual start, not by any means heroes that they don't play. They do play these heroes, but not the way they like to start. And they do be give Big God Shadowfin and Tie Hunter. What do you make of these picks, Sint? Uh, I, I'm, just, I'm just really stuck thinking about why Arteezy was wearing his EG shirt. <laughs> in that camera shot we just saw. Yeah. I thought that was pretty funny. 
backstabbing uh, EG. And may maybe he runs their shirt. Maybe he run out of clean shirts. <laughs> maybe he wears their shirt. <laughs> Is that somehow a, a roundabout? I'm coming for you, EG, or I haven't forgotten about you, or you're I next. Know. I don't know. I really hope he has thought about it. I mean, <laughs> it it's pretty cool if there's. Some oh come on! It's at least crossed right. his mind briefly, yeah, even if he's yeah, not focused have. on it. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I, I do oh, like the sorry, sniper so band, the by the way. I'm sorry for that. Uh, I was saying that we see these picks. What do you think of these picks so far? Uh, I'm the big surprise for me is the f the first face shaker from Team Secret. Everything else is pretty much standard. I feel like they watch those Vici Gaming matches inspired. because 100%. the the Earthshaker sniper that Vici Gaming have been running has just wrecked Shadow Fiend's mid time and time again. Yeah. They still have the shaker. Mm. It's a good here to I catch him out. I think the other reason would probably be. Because the way Big God sometimes like to play r a lot of early aggression 5 men and Earthshaker would be the hero to slow down pushers and just buy our team some valuable minutes to actually farm up an item. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's certainly the case. Yes. The Lion hmm. ban and the Venge ban, two of the most common supports are going to be removed from the game. But Big God still has the possibility to pick the Witch Doctor that they so much like. Team Secret, on the other hand, they still don't have Arteezy's hero. That bad rider, do you think it's a Zai bad rider or an S4 bad rider? It's gotta be S4, right? It's S4 not. just plays such a magnificent bat rider. Yeah, and he can play it in the offlane too. Th they don't have to put it mid, and I also don't think they will. So. so, a lot of things to think about those two cores. Of course, they also miss one support. Broodmother has been uh, unbanned yet, but the thing is, with Does Shadowfin and Tidehunter, do you want a Broodmother? Not really. I I don't mm. I don't know. It might work, but it might. Uh. I think what has been proven in this tournament is that Broodmother as a pick is not directly countered by just having one hero that lanes well against it. It's more about the overarching strategy and the way it affects the enemy team's drafts and how they put their lanes. Yeah. We saw yesterday Team Secret pick Brood into Axe, which is considered one of the absolute best lane counters. They just didn't put him against the Axe. Yes. They safe lane the Brood in the start. He got off to a really good start against a Juggernaut in lane. Then afterwards, he went into Axe's lane. Axe was on lower level than Brood was. He could stand toe-to-toe -to -toe with him, took over the jungle, and just snowballed from there. Yeah. I think this is the same story. I mean, sure, you probably don't want to put your Brood against the Tidehunter, but Brood can ruin the life of your Shadow Fiend and Rubik if he gets off to a good start because they can't access the jungle anymore. Absolutely. Do you think, Aldi, that we're going to see Mid Brood Mother anytime soon? Uh, <laughs> uh, <it's laughs> no, it, 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 you can't take the tower that easily. It's too I easy to gank, and it, you just don't take over the enemy jungle mm. the same way. I know you used to do it since Theoretically, you uh, Yeah, a long time ago when you started playing Mid in one of your old teams. I might have played that once. I played, mid, I played Mid Enigma. I think that's you did that play might yeah. be yeah. I don't know if I've played. Have I played mid brood? I, can't I, I, I remember. Okay. Are you sure it wasn't a pub or something? I think no, no, I've no, done no. it once. Okay. I it's really I not a memory. I remember because up. it was like big deal. Uh -oh. It's like no okay. one did brood. Okay. Oh. And now this is interesting. This, if you look at Team Secret's lineup, you see the Dazzle, very good at protecting a hero. Airshaker, very good at protecting a hero. Bad Rider, every good at, very good at counter initiating and just in general making a wall of protection of a hero, that draw ranger is going to be very, very well protected by these other three picks as well. So, Big God doesn't have anything that will allow them to jump and take the draw ranger and skip all these other guys. Is this Secret's first draw pick in the tournament? No, they ran no. it at least once for Arteezy on the tell stage. You. Maybe twice. But it's, it's, gener it's not been their go-to. No, I think they put someone else mid and he was actually safe lane that game. So that could be a mid lane bet. That's a really big strength of their draft right now is that it's actually difficult for Big God to place the Batrider in a lane. He could be mid, he could be top. They could even safe lane and run an aggressive mm. trial lane draw when you're playing with Dazzle Shaker. That's not the worst lane in the world. Mm. And Big God's support currently a Rubik, not the, not the strongest lane support either. I Wait, I want to say that they haven't played draw. They I haven't they played draw. Are you sure they didn't run it once in the, the group uh, stage? <coughs> doesn't say here. I thought he played one Drow game. Okay, maybe not. Okay, so first Drow. But I mean, it's not exactly shocking. We have mm. seen the the Drow visage from yeah, time I to time I from a lot of the Western teams. I think teams. I'm gonna agree. Oh, fear. Okay. I'm gonna agree with Sin as well. It's more or less, maybe high chance of a mid bat rider because they would need a hero like Bristleback to be their frontliner right now and works well with Dazzle. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Bristle is really good for Secret. But I, that's a really nice thing for them is that they might have. Mm, no, they actually they haven't forced <laughs> Big God to ban Morphling. Uh -huh. uh, 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 Visage. Si they wow. don't ban Visage, I think. Wow. Hasn't uh, Secret played the Dazzle Broodmother? Just having those Spider Links and a hero and a heal bomb? It's really good. I don't think they've played it yet in the tournament. 
In Actually, Brian, can we have. check the, uh, not if they play there or not, but rather the win rate of these two heroes, Broodmother mm, and Dustin they, together? They have to ban I think they have to ban the Broodmother right now to avoid any complications yes. in their laning phase. Since they go they are going for Shadowfin Morphling, yeah, you don't want your lane to get Fairly grief, greedy, not that good at just zoning the Broodmother, nor at hunting her in the mid-game. You don't have internet here, Brian. <laughs> no, but it's fine. If it's good, you can keep it and you can show it later in one of those stats. Okay. Not too crazy, but has been played 12 times. Brunel and Dazzle together. It's a nice combination. So, they ban TA. Huh. They're expecting it to be an offlane bad rider. Though. Yeah. They're yeah. banking on that. That could catch them off guard. The I think Brutus Brute Mother could ca Yeah. I'm thinking if they were to m have Brute Mother, the laning phase of Big God would be... They, m they don't want the morphing to go up against the Brute Mother lane, so they might have to do some aggressive try lane, put the tire on safe lane, and whoever guesses the lanes right would have an edge at the start of the game. The one who is forced to move their lanes with a TP scroll. I think no matter what Big God pick their aggressive try lane, they're running into Shaker Dazzle Drow with a Morphling try lane. Yeah. Yes, and, a, yeah. and a Rubik for that matter. I, yeah. Very weak. Yeah, the and they banned out the Ancient Apparition, the which would have been the, the best range really hero for that feels like lane. the hero that can screw them over right now with the lanes. And Secret will consider it, for sure. It's like one of their absolute best surprise picks. It's not really a surprise anymore. I right mean, let's be honest. Big God definitely know there's a possibility of Brood. I'm sure they watched the games yesterday. They saw how Secret liked Ooh. to run it. It's not like Secret just picked it once the entire tournament. So they let the Brood through. The Axe is also available for Team Secret. Yeah. It hasn't been picked and or banned. It's an okay pick. It's nothing to write home about. But we've seen how strong the Axe can be. And it's another frontliner that protects the Draw Ranger. I feel he he's a frontliner, but he's not a frontliner like Bristol. Bristol is always constantly standing in front, so he gives more protection to the draw. Axe is like you need someone standing in front or someone to initiate, and you cut into the fight, or you're the first one who initiate. The other thing with the axe is you want to just kill someone quickly when you catch them. Yeah, they, they don't, don't really have, have burst. Yeah, they don't have very huge bursts on their team as well. That is a slight concern for Secret though. If they don't dominate the lanes heading into the mid game, they really have little to deal with a morphling. So it they have like to they be thinking about how to maximize their early yeah, laning the stage. The Brute Mother would be one of yeah. the ways to maximize their laning phase. So it feels like they need another damage dealer. The draw by itself. Yeah, that that's the other thing with the axes. They they might be a bit lacking after the laning stage. So we will see other heroes that they have. Picked how about big? We've talked a lot about secret. They're gonna see okay. a razor coming out now. So it's off lane Batrider, mid lane razor versus team. the Shadow Fiend, most likely. Unless big oh. guy want to change that up. Razor stomps that lane. Yeah, Razor plus draw aura. This is gonna be a very favorable lane for him. Mm -hmm. And it makes me wonder if it is, in fact, Arteezy playing the draw. It's probably. Duh duh duh. It probably is. Probably I think is, S4 yeah. on the, S4 is the Razor. razor. Is oh, yeah. Maybe they yeah, put Zai yeah. on the, the Razor and S4 on the bat. I'm not sure how they prefer to distribute the roles, but. Arteezy's Razor is, I, I wanna Zai say, the best Razor in the world, though. Yeah, that's, that's what I was thinking. Like, that's just a hero player combination that's. Lethal. It just and I think Zai can play Drown. Yeah. But it, it mostly just comes down to how they see the, the farm distribution working best, I suppose. Yeah. Big God brought the Shadow Shaman, yes, well... The Morphling Lich dual lane. Morphling Return Lich. of some Vici Gaming TI4 tactics. <laughs> this is a pretty good solution for Big God to, to dual lane mid. It's something Secret's lineup doesn't deal with too well. Are they gonna dual lane mid, I guess, is I the think question. So. Do, you think think so? Do you think so, Winter? I'm not entirely sure if they would actually want to do it because Shad I, I think Shadowfin doesn't mind if he loses a little or has a disadvantage in the lane, he can go to the jungle and you... but according to the stats from that Bruno point out, pointed out the other day Lich going mid has a much higher win rate than Lich going off lane so. yeah. Crippling the mid laner has a much higher impact on the flow of the game than crippling the safe laner of the enemy team for say those 5-10 to ten minutes Lich really yeah. dominates in lane, right? Yeah. So what I'm thinking is if Big God do it that way, then first of all the whole thing about Shadowfiend do doesn't mind getting under farmed, they could safe lane him here and he will probably get mm -hmm. close to free farm. Yeah. Then the Morphling will also not suffer because that mid lane is also a win. I just think logically that is a way they can win two lanes and then you can sacrifice the tide for that i think that's perfect yeah and one of the weakness of leech as well if you put him on the off lane ha he has a higher chance of dying and if you lose if you die once or twice in the early game when the leech is so high level because of the the sacrifice you give away a lot and being in the middle lane mi minimizes the chance of him dying yeah. in the laning phase much safer 
Yeah, but that is going to be the recap of the game so far based on the picks and bans. Now we're going to get to the actual game, which is casted by none other than our friends Gods and Merlini. This is Big God versus Secret, game one of the loser bracket round four. This is the best of three. Guys, take us away. Fight! Thank you, Bruno. Here we go. Game one of Secret versus Big God. As said, I'm Gods. Joining me is Merlini. Game one underway as Big God ventured through this radiant jungle. Looking to perhaps put down some wards. RTK doing RTK things. He likes to get aggressive. <laughs> Feed away a few kills. He's the... Uh, <laughs> there was a hilarious Chinese comic where... In that series where he was playing the Tidehunter and like Burning Ghost from the side of the game, it's like, what setting is your watch set to? It's the ROTK difficulty watch. So there's like Mist Ravages, Feed First Blood, and it's just hilarious. But here we go. Zhao Wei going to get Fissure blocked down here. He may give up a First Blood with the damage strain. Zhao Wei, First Blood, what a Fissure from the high ground. Secret Strike first and secure a Bounty Rune as well as an early kill. Well, okay. Shadowfin was up against a difficult lane at the start, and now it's just going to get even worse for him. Well, Rays are going to be bringing out some items for himself here, as uh, mid lane is, as you said, going to be very rough for Shadowfin. We'll introduce some lineups quickly here as we get things underway. On the dire side, Big God going to run Zhao 8 on the Shadowfin in the mid lane. Safe lane is going to be RTK on the Titan, actually running an offensive trial lane. Lich being played by Ice Eyes, Burning playing the Morphling, and Lanham going to be on your Rubik. For the Radiant side, it's Team Secret with Puppy. Playing the Dazzle, Arteezy on the Dro Ranger. Over in the mid lane, Kuro going to be playing your Earthshaker, supporting the Razor of S4, leaving the offlaner, Zai, on the Batrider. How do they manage to get that ward down? I thought BG had that control in the jungle, the Observer ward a little bit to the upper right. They 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 had that and they uh, were able to get a sick block because of that, because they knew the team couldn't save him at that point. Um, and generally, you're scared about going into that position, especially on Secret, because that place is pretty heavily obscured by fog, but I'm surprised uh, Big God let that go. Wow, this is possibly going to be... Oh, no, not going to dive it. Decides the tower blows. It's going to be too much of a threat there, but Zhao Wei, constant pressure coming his way in the mid lane, and as you said, the ward there for Secret going to just help give them a big edge as far as dealing with this offensive trial, and they can see the movements when they go into the jungle, look to contest the pulls, and react accordingly. Yeah, and Shaker doesn't really have to feel scared because generally when you're a Shaker and you're wrapping around like that, you're very scared of getting wrapped around and uh, just gone on because Fissure has a really long cooldown. Um, but this way he can play very aggressively on the Shadow Fiend. So not only is it a bad matchup in the Razor versus the Shadow Fiend, he also has to deal with Drow Aura and he has to deal with the Earth Shaker. And it just keeps getting worse and worse for him. On top of that, S4 already has a boots advantage on him because of that kill. Yeah, and that's where both solo lanes for Seeker will do well here. The bonus damage. Zai's actually diving under ROTK under the tower. Will ROTK lower the difficulty setting? He's going to feed a second kill to Zai on Team Secret. Things looking bad for Big God here in the early game. It is just two minutes in. It's just a couple of kills. But all three lanes seem to be at least somewhat in disarray. They're looking for a kill now in Arteezy. The bottom lane wave form through. And it looks like with little backup, just the Puppy Dazzle who... Did have a great, but was out of range, and now he's actually got himself really out of position. There's a rotation coming in from your Earthshaker. Puppy gonna grave himself, but spend his money and look to maybe buy some boots here as he's trying to get a counter kill on Ice Ice. He won't get it immediately. In comes Kuro. One right click, not gonna be enough. The Fissure block gets the Lich kill. Kuro gonna pay for this with his life as well, and Big God pick up a huge boost to their economy here in the bottom lane. Three kills go their way, only losing the Lich, but oh, RTK, RTK, please. Say it ain't so. Zayn not going to get this one. He must have killed him at the first time, like right after a Kraken Shell proc, because yeah. he had like a ton of stacks on him that weren't able to come off. And Puppy, we usually skill, see him skill Grave at level 6. This time he skilled it a little bit earlier uh, because his tri lane is faced against a pretty difficult lane. I wouldn't even say it's a tri lane because Kuro has been moving up to the top lane. He will scout him out with the Observer Ward, but ROTK, not really sure where his Kraken uh, stack is at. Hmm. The thing is, even if you see the Earthshaker coming your way, your only option is to just back out completely out of this lane, giving free farm to the Batrider, which isn't exactly an appealing option. Well, he can also take a gamble and TP out, but Zai's actually held a skill point for that, too. Okay. That is pretty, pretty next level play from Zai. 
Well, for Big God, they're going to keep committing to this offensive trial line of theirs, and something they also may be looking for is to bait ROTK and TP in one of their supports. Bring in someone like Rubik, who is holding on to a TP scroll. For now, he's going to go on Puppy. Gets the lift, followed up by the Lich Nova. The body block coming in from Lamp. Puppy cannot get past, but with a gust as well as a Tango, he will squeak on through. Now your waveform forward. Puppy has graved himself up. Burning wants his kill. He needs to start Morphling Strength, though. He's taking a lot of damage, and the tower going to kill your Morphling. Morphling gets the kill. Pay for it with life. If you get the Draw Ranger, it's worth it here, but it doesn't look like they're going to get the second kill. One for one trade, Morphling for Dazzle. Not exactly favoring Big God. That was a nice tree that he ate too. I don't. I think if he didn't eat that tree, he wouldn't have been able to move after the gust. And Secret making the best out of a bad situation on the bottom lane. Again, it's a really difficult lane for the Drow Ranger and this Dazzle combo, but they're making it work, getting a lot of return kills. Holy cow, look at the CS in the mid lane. 25-17 on Razor to the 9-0 of the Shadow Fiend. The first blood, obviously, the big thing there, but even just having constant Earthshaker pressure. Very reminiscent of what we saw Misery's Bane do in the Cloud9 game uh, yesterday, where it's just, you shut down the mid lane, prevent whoever's there from getting any farm, anything whatsoever. And then, at this stage of the game, it's not just about stopping their farm, it's about having that kill threat. I didn't actually see uh, Big God's first Observer Ward, but they only have one OBS out on the map and none in the inventory, so... Because one of their wards <laughs> got dewarded, I assume, that means that Kiro's just free to go wherever he wants and setting oh. up for another kill on Shadow yeah. Hmm. They really want Shadow. I think the second Observer was on that pool camp, which got dewarded uh, by Secret. But as a result, Big God very limited on vision here. Draw Ranger also being very efficient with uh, her gold, going for the mass agility, giving all that plus damage oh. to everybody. ROTK takes a lot of napalm stacks here. Zai's still going in under the tower, but he's tanking tower blows. The gush now from ROTK. Comes into play, Zai bottling up, he's trying to bait ROTK in six napalm stacks. ROTK would love a Kraken proc, he's not getting it though. One more right click and the flame break, but he wands it up at the last second. He's still gonna go down. Zai gets his second kill at top lane. Meanwhile, simultaneously, the Lich kills off your Dazzle at bottom. Well, Zai having a great time in the off lane. 3.2k net worth. He's just farming away and getting kill after kill now. Even though the score is 5 5 4 5, this is really bad for Big God. They're supposed to be winning the early game with a Lich, and neither Tidehunter nor Shadowfiend are having a good time. And Shadowfiend generally will rely on the. Uh, Shadowfiend will rely on the Tidehunter to protect him later, but without a Blink Dagger, he's not going to be able to counter the Batrider initiates. And Batrider is also going to have his Blink really early. He has 1970 gold. So we're talking about like a 7 minute Blink Dagger here, and this is might be even earlier if he gets another kill on ROTK. He's like one creep from six. He hasn't leveled it. up last week yet, but that kind of works in his favor. He's got all this extra points into the Firefly, which is doing big damage in Zai. Gonna look to chase down ROTK, another Napalm comes out, Lamps TP'd in, wants the return kill on Zai, will not get it! The right click's not gonna be enough, he's still got six charges in. Blink Dagger, TP scroll, blinks himself back, and he's gonna make his way back to base, even picks up a smoke. This blink timing is one of the fastest I've ever seen, not to mention it's also with boots, bottle, a magic stick. This is just... they, they can't deal with this battle. one of those ROTK feed games. Man, that, I mean, Zai playing very outside of the box too. Holding one skill point at five, not getting Lasso until level eight because of the mana restrictions. Very smart play from him overall. And I mean, when it, when you're when you're ROTK too, you probably expect the Lasso, but don't expect to be burned down by level four Firefly. Well, now Batrider going to make his rotation towards mid lane. Oh Link in Lasso, Zhao Wei. If he wasn't having a bad enough time already, he's going to find himself with another. Death to his name. The TPM from Ice is not going to amount to too much there. I'm sure Zhao Wei just looks at it and is like, ROTK, dude, what, what's going on? How does this bat have a blink dagger? Like, <laughs> <laughs> at this point, you'd probably just Burning, look. Going aggressive oh. on RTZ in the bottom lane. Okay. Ooh, that was close. RTZ with an interesting little item build here. The triple Wraith Band with a, a fourth one possibly coming out. That's partly also where the dominance come from, comes from. The Razor as well as the Batrider have such a better time in lane with all this bonus damage. Yeah, I think it's it's a really big deal for Batrider since it makes up a huge portion of his base damage. Like 57 plus 16. I mean, that's so much higher than you would expect a Batrider to normally be doing. For another kill, is Zai the Fissure going to start things off with the Napalm? And Zai gets lifted, probably won't be... Actually, gets pulled in! I don't know about that, Lamb, as Zai does not decide to commit to the kill. He's actually stolen. A spell here. But for now, 
Having the Fissure in hand makes it a lot harder for Secret to get aggressive onto this Rubik. Very kind of nice and early level 6 coming out for your Rubik, at least. And Secret are just doing amazingly in this early game. Amazingly well. It's a 3,000 net worth lead already. The only lane where it seems Big God got much done was that bottom lane where Morphling managed to get a couple of kills. Did die once, though. So he's 2-1-3. and three. Treads, Ring of Aquila. Still, he's going to have a very tough time with uh, the damage output that Secret have with the draw aura, with the minor summer from the Dazzle. This is going to be a game where Morphling has to be very careful about how aggressive he gets. I mean, look at Shadow Fiend's items. He's trying to work on Treads, but he is broke. And they also don't have any stacks. Hmm. What's, what's Big God's next move here? I mean, they're playing so far from behind. Are they just trying to sit back and avoid mm -hmm. getting ganked? Or do they try and make a move and... They Go can play one of two ways. One is just like stack and farm and never play uh, out like in sight of uh, any dangerous place, like outside your T1s. Or they can uh, try and bait out ganks, but looks like they're actually going to smoke in the opponent's jungle. This is really risky. They actually don't have Tidehunter here. Oh, that could instantly blink out. Gets fissured though. That's the stolen fissure. That's All a right. really unexpected play from Big God. If, if you're if you're secret, you do not see that smoke game coming at all. There's, there's no tight. You, you would think that they wouldn't smoke without the tight hunter at all. But still, get a pretty important kill on the bat rider. However, he does have his blink. He has done a lot of damage at this point, but it will set Xiao Wei back on the road to recovery. Yeah. So you smoke kick like that. We'll see what their next move will be. They've got the tide up to level seven. He is Ravage Online, which they may be wanting to look to fight around and. Secret just looking to itemize for the early game. A drum of endurance picked up by Eraza. The Arteezy build with the triple wraith bands. Everything is kind of early game centric for the Radiant squad. It's difficult for Big God because they don't really have anything on BKBs. Oh, they're looking for another kill here. S4 in the mid lane. Pops his drum charge, but he's going to get pulled back. Zhao Wei gets another recovery kill here. And stolen Fissure. Uh, again, these really unexpected plays are Big God are pulling them through the mid game. A smoke ink with three heroes without the Tidehunter and then the stolen Rubik Fissure to set up into a lift. And Razor thinks he's really tanky. He has treads, he has drums, he has a lot of HP to work with. At the same time, you can never discount the damage of a double or triple raise from Shadow Fiend. Yeah. And the drums does give him some survivability. Uh, something we used to see a lot on the Razor is the mech. Is that just too difficult of an item to build now with the mana constraints, or do you think it's still viable? For the viable? most part, yes. Uh, I think Drums is pretty nice, though he's going to get kited a little bit by Frost Armor, and he needs a lot of mobility in these team fights. It also just gives you uh, a lot of HP. I don't know, I, I personally still like the mech build, but a lot of uh, Razor Sight mana restraints as uh, the main reason for not getting the mech. I mean, Tread Swap, though, not that big of a deal, I would say, personally, but... Yeah. Okay. Well, Secret now just looking to play the kind of uh, the farm battle. They they don't. I think they've realized they've given up a few crucial kills. They don't want this to. They're probably looking to get these next couple of big items and then try and make take some objectives. Because end of the day, late game Shadowfiend Morphling, two big carries who can built around a Tide Ravage probably win the late game. To me, it feels like Secret kind of don't want to let this game drag out too long. I I I don't completely agree with that just because I think Secret is has a lot better way better BKB lineup than uh, Big God. Like if they BKB, what do they have? Maybe Blink Ravage. That's unreliable okay. though. And then uh, on the flip side, like what do BG have on BKB? Or sorry, what do Secret have on BKBs? They have Blink Lasso. They have Weave into Razor damage. They have Drought damage. They have Blink Echo. So it, you can play the foreign game, but I wouldn't feel comfortable uh, if you're Big God going to this super, super late. And you're also just, it's Team Secret who have most of the map control right now. They they can kind of look to at least farm more in more aggressive places, spread up their heroes a bit more, and use the Batrider to try and find those pickoffs. It looks like the Batrider is going to make a move down towards the bottom lane. Has the blink available, and Lamb is going to move fast. The Lasso does not catch into him. A flame break pushes him back as well, so Rubik will not be caught out here at the bottom lane. So far, Lamb's been the kind of the big playmaker for this big god team as far as getting them back into this game. As he's been in a lot of the games Big God have won, his line has been absolutely incredible throughout this tournament, and we'll see what he can do here so far on the Rubik. The Fissure yeah. Steals have been nice. Lonham has just been playing amazingly and keeping up this Ancient Stack too for catch-up for ROCK. And looking at the Radiant Wars, they're not looking to play super aggressively with Batrider. It's just one war position on the bottom lane, one in the mid, but none super deep into the opponent's jungle to uh, scout out Shadow Fiend, for example. 
and that one gets immediately taken down. Secret have to, have to play this a little bit more passively now. Yeah. They had a they had a really good early game, but now it's it's at that point where Big God has recovered, and Secret can't snowball off that and take T ones as easily as they would have liked. Yeah. Having the Tide Ravage, having also the Shadow Fiend mech now does give them a lot of uh, options as far as taking some fights, getting a bit more aggressive. They smoke up and we'll see where they're headed here. This could even be something as, uh, well, as, as sneaky as a Roshan, although they don't have the best lamp to do so. It seems they'd prefer to go for a fight around the Ravage. ROTK leading this one off. Puppy as well as Kuro kind of out of position here. Puppy now hiding in the trees. He's being pinged out and burning. Going to waveform through. No opportunity to use a Grave. Kuro also in trouble. There's TP and Ravage is going to be coming out. Hatches two. Chain Frost to follow. S4 and Kuro on the defense now. The Chain Frost still bouncing. Mostly the creeps, unfortunately. Zai will cop a bounce now. And no one on the Big God team going down. They've got two here. The Echo Slam coming out from Kuro brings down your Shadow Fiend, though. A two for one trade with the carry Shadow Fiend taken out of the picture. But still a decent result for Big God. Getting the kill on the Razor, getting the Dazzle as well. And now they're going to get a T1 tower possibly claimed here, although it looks like Secret will at least come in and try to find this Deny. Still a risky play from um, Big Guy to push this. Yeah, it seems uh gets down to Deny range. Only a 2,500 gold lead here, so by no means a, a big lead. They don't have any Secret. cooldowns. Oh, Secret, they want to go in, but the lift on Zai going to prevent him from being able to lasso anyone. Lamb, he's making big plays on this Rubik, but he does end up getting punished here. Burning now in trouble as well. Not doing much right-click damage. Secret actually used the defensive weave on themselves before going in, and as a result, a bit tr tricky for Big God to actually fight back. Bottle refill trick by Burning and Xiao8. Ghost up to first, not terribly common, but I'd say really good versus Razor, really good versus Dazzle, really good versus Drow Ranger, and a Secret actually going to smoke up. Oh, this is Shadow Fiend Illusion, though. Oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Two people bought that bait. Mask of Madness and everything. That was... That's one of those kind of mistakes you don't normally see coming because the smoke yeah. doesn't get revealed, but... I think, they thought it was, I think they thought it was an illusion rune, so they could like instantly kill it and then maybe still go for Roche, and they're like, wait, it's a replicate, we can't actually kill it off, it's going to scout us out. And meanwhile, RTK, the ancient sect you talked about that Rubik has set up for him, is going to give him enough money for his Blink Dagger, which gives big... 16 it. minutes is, is pretty good for him, yeah. considering his start. Zero and three. With this initiation tool, I imagine once Ravage comes back up, Big God going to be looking to take fights once more. Zai smoked up. He's looking for Burning. Not really a kill he can get on his own, as Burning runs into Zai. Not going to prevent him from getting that regen rune. And that smoke not really achieving too much. Two smokes in a row from Secret. One towards Roshan, which gets revealed. Another one towards the top lane. Those are precious smokes. Especially if you look forward 5-10 minutes from now when they're going to be looking to kind of take objectives and not having these. The other thing is Secret have yet to push down a single tower. Do you feel like that's just the nature of their lineup, or is it more just a, a playstyle thing where they're not putting on enough pressure? I don't think they can put that much pressure. Like, Drow is so squishy right now. She has 1,000 HP and Mask of Madness. She can, like, easily die if she gets ravaged. And their initiate's really risky, too. Like, if they initiate on a Shadow Fiend, they don't pop them before uh, the mech. They get ravaged, they mech up, and then everyone dies. on the fl uh, And also, Lanham can, like, lift them to counter-initiate, too. Uh, and they can't burst down Morphling um, either, because he can just uh, morph while the lasso is going on, unless they get a... Uh, drow silence on him, but at the same time, you know, they, they can't lane. really put Drow. Kuro That's gets caught out by the Blink Dagger here. Chain Frost going to be used in everything. Kuro gets graved up. That's just going to delay the inevitable as he gets brought down. Oh, no. Another Fissure Steal by Rubik. That is really bad for Secret. That was probably the one thing Kuro didn't want to do before he died. Yes. Just give away that Fissure. Exactly. The Fissure is, is a really big deal just because, I mean, Rubik doesn't have a Blink Dagger, so if he has to go in and lift, he puts himself at risk of being lassoed and forced that back in. Um, but with Fissure, he can just stay way far in the back and just unload his arsenal of spells. It's probably the best spell in this game you can steal. I would say as so. As far as, like, in a team fight, you'd love to maybe steal an Echo Slam, but as far as initiation tools and just having to Echo control Slam's the tempo, melee range, I would say that yeah. Fissure's better. Okay. Plasma Field's decent for damage, too, just because he's always at high range. Weave is also pretty good, but I would say Fissure is the yeah. number one spell to steal. And it's second time this game, and we'll, we'll see Zhao Wei in the enemy jungle. They're trying to take objectives now. It's Big God, who are the ones actually controlling the tempo. They've got the Blink on the Tide, level 2 Ravage, and 
as you mentioned, he's so squishy on the Joe Ranger, not really equipped for fighting into this big god squad. And once he starts taking some towers, you put an E-Blade onto Burning, and suddenly you've got a big threat in this Morphling. They also have a lot of armor. We're talking about Shadow Fiend with Mech. We have Frost Armor on Lich. We have a Morphling who's Agi Morph, so he has 15 agility and a Ghost Scepter. Like, none of these are really susceptible to the right clicks from Drow Ranger, and she can get like a couple of right clicks before she has to back off immediately. Tidehunter with Kraken, Max Kraken, that is. The lanes went so well for Secret, but here they are. Not going to be able to get the top T1 tower. Gets denied by Burning, and he's going to farm out this top lane just 600 away from the E Blade, so. Perhaps the ROTK difficulty setting was just perfect here because <laughs> I, I expected them to be further behind and in trouble based on the laning stage. Yeah, I mean, that it is rare that you see someone lose a one-on-one -on -one matchup that badly. Just un unprepared. I mean, I guess that's the ROTK style, though. High risk, high reward. High risk, medium reward, maybe. <laughs> well, your Rubik's even going to Blink Dagger now to go with... Zai's been showing himself, I think, a little bit too much. Uh, I mean, he, he was split pushing top and getting the tower, but at the same time, if Battle Rider's on the map, no one's scared. Like, w what are they going to do? Like, initiate with a weave, initiate with uh, Earthshaker without a blink dagger? Like, none of these heroes are big enough to go in. Razor doesn't have BKB, so without Bat Rider as their initiation, Big God can just take whatever objectives that they want. That's, and that's a really good point, because, like, you look at Zai, he's almost the top farmer on this secret team, and you think, he, I mean, he has played amazingly, he dominated his lane, but... He's making it so that Big God can take Roshan, yes. move around the map because of how visible he is on the map. He can't show. I think he should be like farming the opponent's jungle and maybe stacking up his his own and trying to control objectives like Roshan. I don't think they should be giving a Roshan away that easily. Like they have plasma field spam, they have weave, uh, Earthshaker can block them off, and of course Bat Rider. Bat Rider, king of Roshan. Well, here's your E Blade coming out now with Burning having that. Zhao Wei, he's going holding on to the Aegis, and uh, BKB, I believe, on the Courier coming out for your Shadow Fiend. There's Lamb, Blink Dagger in hand. There's your Blink Lasso, going to start things off on a Zhao Wei. He's got the Aegis, though. This is going to possibly be turned around. Kuro's going to get lifted up in the side here. Zhao Wei still getting his damage drain. Can't really turn and fight just yet. He's waiting for his backup to come, and with the Aegis being popped, it seems Secret don't want to stick around for a second life. They're going to TP themselves out, take the Aegis, and... Get out. That's BKB up on Shao Wei. Burning so. sees Puppy. He's got the shotgun. Wait for forward. E Blade. Adaptive. He doesn't actually. He hits the adaptive too early. Now he gets silenced up. Burning is just dead. Big misplay. Just as well. Oh dear. They also saw him coming with the Observer Ward. I don't think he expected uh, Dazzle to be reinforced. Oh. Top lane. Zai gets lifted up, thrown forward, and he's going to get picked off here. So, a couple uncharacteristic pickoffs, perhaps, both on. Zai's Batrider as well as the Burning Morphling, and kind of ends up being a one-for-one -one trade, although not exactly two linked events. You mentioned how badly Shadow Fiend was uh, getting owned in lane, and look at his CS now. He actually has more CS than Razor right now. And, I mean, that's one of the strengths of Shadow Fiend. He doesn't mind if he has a slightly underhanded matchup in mid just because he farms a jungle at an absolutely ridiculous pace. He's also much better at Roshan uh, than a lot of the current mid heroes. So this is why Shadow Fiend has been picked up a lot, and Shadow has so much farm. RTK at the Ancients here. Going to be a lift here. Lamb in the right place at the right time. He's 10 gold short of his Blink Dagger. Kuro saying, please, just give me a bit of time here. Lanham didn't steal a spell. He, oh. didn't, he didn't want to steal okay. a chant. Okay. Does he still have the Fissure? No. Okay. A static Link. I guess not a bad spell to have. Mm. It's I'm, not so much for the damage for yourself, but more for the, the damage drain. But. Yeah, I mean, he doesn't want... What's he going to do, go on the Razor when he's yeah. being in his face? That's that's really risky. But he does have his Blink, which is the big deal. Top lane, Zai. He's got back up here with S4 right next to him. So Zhao is going to be very careful not to get too aggressive here. Has Lamb once again seen behind him. Blink, Lift is there and available. Blink comes in with a Ravage and S4 BKBs it off in time. But it's going to be Zai possibly going down here. He has been graved up. They've killed off the Earthshaker only in the previous fight. Here comes your Adaptive Strike Shotgun Morphling. Killing the Dazzle, and Zai surviving thanks to the Grave. He's got the Blink out if he needs to, and just trying to kite Big God as much as possible. Huge damage deal, plus 224 damage for S4, but he's going to get Chain Frost, and without a BKB, he goes down, taking the Tide and Shadow Fiend with him. A two for two trade in the top lane, but some space created for Mr. Babev in the bottom lane. 
I think RTZ is playing this correctly, though. I, he, he hasn't died ever since the laning phase, and he's playing very, very safe. And Drow Ranger can't afford to be, like, more behind than she already is. Secret don't really have, like, that great, like, high ground push, so they can't end the game uh, that early. Also, they missed the first Roshan, too, so that means that Drow is just going to be extremely, extremely weak and super easy to kill. Like, if they see her, it's just going to be, boom, shotgun. And he doesn't have a BKB. I saw him have an Ogre Club. Is that a Sanjin Yashu or a BKB? So now they have two BKB. KB is one up on the Razor, one up on Dry Ranger. They probably need one on Bat Rider too, especially now that he has a gem. This is a somewhat risky uh, pickup. Looks like he feels rather safe uh, because they don't have Ravage up right now, but he still is very likely to lose it. He almost died in the last fight with a Grave. Yep. He has picked up the Yoga Club, so he's building towards that. As we'll see, Kuro make his move forward down this bottom lane. They have smoked up and. Lamb is maybe going to be tagged up. It's a lasso onto Burning. They've caught him out in the side here, but he's already morphing strength. This may be enough to save his life. Can he get the waveform out? The Echo Slam is there. Burning gets the waveform, and he's going to be kept alive for now. Doesn't have the E-Blade in. Two big god heroes hit the deck with Arteezy getting himself a double kill. Oh, dear. This is not the kind of next move that big god were hoping for. Losing their morphling and Burning's farm and item progression this game has not been very Burning-esque. Three deaths. That was a really big kill. Hmm. Isama slowing down the push on the tower, but not really, not really to much significance. Yeah, that was that was uh, such a big turnaround. They had two key items: the first a gem and the uh, draw ranger BKB. So they feel very confident going into the base. Well, Ten seconds until a ravage. That's a round when burning is going to be respawning on his morphling. ROTK going to get pestered by the napalm, and it looks like secret. Oh, Arteezy. Bit scared there when he saw the tide blink in. Pops the BKB a bit prematurely, and ROTK wants to chase, but a great fissure from Kuro going to block any further advances as Secret will be able to retreat safely. Oh, puppy, he gets out. One of Secret's biggest strengths, I think, is their uh, experience in pushing high ground. They they will very rarely push high ground too too early, and they will rarely get picked off on their way out. And that's a mistake that you'll see many teams make. They they get in. Look at how much damage they got on the T3. They got 1,300 damage out of 1,600. That's a lot. T3, 25 minutes in, and it's a very close game too. They're only possessing a 1,000 gold lead. Rarely will yep. you see teams be able to do that, and without any losses. So Kir Kiroki covers their butts with a very nice fissure uh, on the backside. And that's where you're probably okay with RTZ. Maybe not needing to use his BKB, but just guaranteeing that they get out safely, get the damage done, and they can come back once they find another pickoff. Perhaps the next smoke gank. They do have to be a bit worried about Big God as far as their next item pickups in the Tides Refresher, as well as the Aegis, which is going to be respawning in the next minute or two. I think that Big God might need a gem of their own, just so Secret can't run around. Uh, I think Batrider was a little quiet in the 11 to like 20 minute phase of the game, and now that he has a gem, now that he's working on his BKB and has BOTs with global reach, he is going to be a threat to deal with. And a lot of these heroes are just very vulnerable. We saw how quick the Morphling died without a Manta style. I guess even with a Manta, he'd probably still die. And Shadow Fiend, even though he has a BKB, he can still die very quickly because Drow hits like a truck right now. Almost 300 damage. Yeah. Well, Shao Wei doing what he can. You mentioned that a lot of these heroes do have pretty good armor on the big god side, and they're going to need all the survivability they can get because Burning is not really doing what he wants to. He's only got the shotgun for now, doesn't have any... Uh, new big item coming his way that soon. Just 1,700 gold, so... As far as Morphling's concerned, is there any big item that stands out that you feel like he's going to need for his next item? BKB's one of the safer choices. I think Manta's pretty good, though, although it might get echoed down. Uh, he needs to survive during the fights. I think that's actually priority number one for him. There's going to be a lot of things that he can't really burst through, namely the couple of BKBs and the Grave. So he's going to have to stay a lo lo stay alive uh, for a long time in teamfight. So he can go like a safe safe build, like BKB Lincolns uh, or BKB Manta, I would say. BKB Lincolns is really good versus the uh, Bat Rider, though. All right. Speaking of Manta, it looks like Artesio on the Joe Ranger has completed his as uh, Razor up to 3.5k gold as well. And this is where Secret, all three of their cores, surpassing the 10k net worth mark. And for Big God, Tide, not quite up there. The Morphling, well, he's just over 10k. You'd hope for more on him, considering he is your kind of main carry this game, or at least that's what Burning traditionally does. It seems more there's, there's going to be more pressure on Jawek to get a lot done in these fights, but going for the mech build on Shadow Fiend uh, is building into a Butterfly now as well. It's kind of a more uh, defensive build coming out. 
from the SF with this mech BKB? It's still going to be so tough to counter-initiate the bat. Like, they've been really reliant on Lon M being able to get the blink lift. Ooh, um, do they see ROTK? Where is the gem? The bat rider is not here at the bottom lane for now. He's back at base, and looks like this Invis Tide is getting a lot of good scouting information. He's going to look to set up for his team. The TP's coming in for the bat rider. No, he cancels it. Oh, dear. This could be bad here. ROTK chasing in hot pursuit. The Invis room was not spotted being picked up. It looks like it will expire, though. The rest of Big God just couldn't quite catch up to where ROTK was. It's a slower Roche. They actually need to kill this Observer Ward. They have a sentry up on the high ground, but they haven't been able to clear it. They don't have vision. They can't leave that ward up if they want to do Roche. Oh, they smoke. Actually, behind vision. Okay. That's one of those things where that ward, I feel like, gives crazy good vision, but if you know it's there... You can kind of fake around it. I think they know it's there, though. Secret did just cast a weave. They they casted a weave right here about, like, 30 seconds ago. Misfortune for Big God. They go into Roshan about five seconds before it respawns. Ice Ice is being patient. He wants to wait it out. He's saying, please, just come out. No! It was going to be, like, two seconds later. Now Rubik goes in. Oh, no! <laughs> this might be better for them. They're going to get a pick off on oh, Puppy. Oh, they find... Yeah. Oh, what? Puppy walks past them. The waveform through. Now Puppy going to be kind of isolated here. Going to go for a grape, but can't really TP with all these heroes around. And the Adaptive Strike going to set things up here. And now they can go into Roshan. Not the, yeah, not the worst thing in the world. It looked like it was going to be really unfortunate for them. But a free pick off on Dazzle, that's that's worth it. Yeah, they will lose the top T2 tower. And it, it just feels like it took them longer than needed to find something out of that. But in the end, it's a, a Roshan as well as a kill on Puppy, just for their tier 2 top tower. So it seems like a pretty good trade for Big God. Not to mention, they kind of want to buy some time. They want this Tide Refresher. There's going to be a lot of pressure on Tide to wait it out and find the perfect time to go in for that Blink Ravage, because with all these BKBs on Team Secret, it's going to be difficult to get that good timing. So generally, this this duo, this Requiem plus uh, Anger Smash, is really detrimental to any sort of right clickers. But I actually don't think Secret's right clickers worry too much about it, just because they have Precision Aura. They also have uh, Dazzle Weave, which is I guess doesn't really work for your base damage, but it's still a lot of yeah. damage to work with. And of course, Static Link. Static Link is going to be independent of that for the most part. So they they still have a lot of physical damage even without. Uh, even with minus 110 percent hey man those those big es totems they don't that doesn't get hurt by yeah. it either <laughs> yes says i don't care about your anchor smash rtz now gonna get caught out here does have the bkb and in hot pursuit is the rest of the big god team is burning he's got himself a haste rune rtz just gonna go for a bkb tp out land with a stolen grave bit of a panic play coming out from your rubik but he was just looking to track Arteezy there and forcing out the BKB. This is one of those games where if this drags 40, 50 minutes, having five second BKBs against a refresher tide, as well as an E-Blade Morphling can really hurt. He's looking for Puppy. He has a haste rune. Puppy, vision gonna come his way. The E-Blade is there. And we will see the adaptive strike still being used. Burning wants to go for this one. Has he got a replicate out? The last right click, not going to do enough. Burning going to start morphing strength. Now it is Rubik Lamb, the hero of this big god team, finding what's necessary. And he finishes the job. Oh, man. BG turning up the screws. They have Aegis of the Immortal with three minutes left. Is this a time for them to go high ground? Really difficult versus Bat Rider and Earthshaker. Well, we've seen Arteezy make some great decisions when it comes to counter pushing other lanes and forcing teams back to TP, assuming they actually have TPs, which is the case. Big God going to send in Lamp forward, and he's looking to try and find what pickoffs he can, but he's going to be careful here. Cancels the Batrider TP in with the Boots of Travel. Nice play from him with the Fade Bolt, and looks like with that secret... He doesn't clear off. out the Illusions. The Illusions almost got this T3. In he could have at least Anchor Smashed. Oh, wow. ROTK, please. Priest. Morphling, I feel like with E-Blade, is also one of the good, better heroes at forcing teams to use their BKBs early in a fight. Because if you just shotgun someone, even if they dodge some of the damage with the BKB, it still forces it out. And that yes. makes it a lot easier for Tide to come in with a Ravage later on. I definitely agree with that. I, I actually think Morphling's pretty darn good versus BKB heroes. Well, let's see what Secret have in mind. They're going to keep Arteezy farming. He's managed to keep on track with the Shadow Fiend, as has S4 on the Razor. And even though they have an Aegis, it doesn't look like Big God are going to be able to 
get too much in terms of objectives at this time, at, for the time being. They have so much armor on Razor now, though. 28 without Weave. Going for the AC post BKB. Binko do have a lot of magical damage. You look at Shadowfiend with his ultimate, Lich Chain Frost, Morphling E Blade. I mean, the Tide Ravages. They secret have the BKBs, but if Big God can kite around the BKBs back off when they're used, even with all this armor, I can still see Big God being able to deal with these uh, th these secret core heroes. Yeah, it's about uh, manage or cooldown management for uh, Big God, and of course managing secrets BKBs. Can they control it? Can they pop them before they pop BKB with Ravages? Are they going to wait out uh, the Ravages? Can they have damage control during the BKBs with a Requiem uh, yep. and uh, Tidehunter Anchor Smash? Like, it, it's a lot of uh, finer things that have to go into their gameplay. Well, someone needs to defend top lane. Secret, despite not having the Aegis themselves, are actually poking at the high ground here. They don't have any catch aside from Tidehunter Ravage. And I mean, I guess Ruby can go in, but he has to be very scared because he can get blown up in a matter of seconds without a Ghost Scepter. He should be, but he's been playing super aggressive. He did have the Grave for a while, which has now expired, so looking for a new spell to steal is Lamb. Yes. He's got Blink and Four Staff on himself. He's been in 13 of these 16 kills for Big God, and does feel like he's been the big playmaker of this team. They also have a gem up on Ice Ice. This is really important. They, they can't let a secret roam free on their side of the map, which is pretty much what they've been doing. Big God, after kind of straying too far into this enemy jungle, realize they have to quickly got to get out. Zai has a blink and a full staff, and Zhao Wei may have overstayed his welcome. They have to de-ward this. Uh, actually, I guess it's expired now, but that ward lasted full duration. That's a very important uh, point for BG to hold, too, because they need to be able to farm the Ancients to keep up with Secrets Farm, and of course, keeping up with Roshan. And they have a gem, so there's not really an excuse for uh, that's still to be up. However, they do have the ROTK Refresher. I believe that was scouted out earlier, so it shouldn't come as a surprise to Secret. Yeah, that I believe so. He's had it for a good couple of minutes now, and I think and shown himself on the map during that time. In late game, who do you favor? I feel like if Big God can execute... They, they've got the harder to execute draft, but I feel like they've got the better late game draft. If they can fight, kite around the BKBs, hit the Ravages... I give them a slight edge. We'll see Secret now run into Zhao Wei. They get the last off, but Zhao Wei got the BKB off. They can't burst him down, at least not easily. S4 trying to steal damage here, getting a lot out of Zhao Wei. And Zhao Wei, all he can do is run. May look for a Requiem of Soulsia, but he doesn't want to die in the process. Uh, That's easy. three BKBs. They wow, have to back off. Here comes a ROTK. Not going to go for it just yet. He decides with S with uh, Zhao Wei as low as he is and the Aegis no longer in hand. That was a sick BKB pop by Xiao Wei. If he didn't pop that BKB, that would have been yep. disastrous for Big God. It does look like we're going to that late game. And we'll see how things pan out, how the itemization works. And It's still anyone's game. Yeah. I, I don't think anyone... Like, either team has the edge. They, I mean, they have the potential to make big plays, too, because you you can see how quickly the timing is on the Blink Lasso. It's like a they have to Blink Lasso ASAP to to prevent him from BKBing, and Xiao Wei has to BKB ASAP as soon as he sees him. And they can outplay that with, like, a Morph Replicate on the Shadow Fiend. What are you going to do? Right-click it, and then he BKBs in your face, and then you just don't get to initiate? Like, and, yeah. And these mind games are possible from Big God. And at the same time, like, Secret, they, can, they have the potential for big plays as Batrider, has always been top pick material because of this. Execution will be key, and yeah, I gotta say, looking forward to see how things pan out, because right now, game one of this best of three, loser bracket, small final, round four, I don't know what you wanna call it, we've called it like six different names <laughs> as far as what this match is, but the loser of this match gets fourth place, winner will advance to the next round and be battling it out to get into the grand finals against team evil geniuses who are awaiting the winner. So I'm gonna well, past Observer Ward, make sure you clear that one out. That was also really good timing by, I, I would say, both teams. Like, Secret knew that Xiao Eight's uh, Aegis was down, and uh, at the same time, like, Big God knew that Secret was going to make a move because their Aegis was down, too. So both of these teams are just very aware of what's going on in the game and playing very well. Oh, there's your El Rep well, illusion bait. That's just a Manta illusion. See, the outplays it. If that, like, happens and they BKB, they just get just obliterated by Ravage if they can't get out in time. Like, and it, it, it's just so difficult for Secret to get a good initiative. Well, and that's the other thing. With a Batrider, when he goes in for that Blink Lasso, a lot of the time he's going to want to BKB. Yes. He, just because there's a Blink Lift, there's a Blink Ravage. If he doesn't BKB with the Lasso, there's a good chance he gets countered. And hey, he never actually knows if it's a Replicate, if it's an Illusion. Yeah. I, I At some point, I think he's actually going to have to get a Hex to 
maybe deal with uh, actually i don't know it, it's it's just a difficult life for bat rider top lane there's gonna be uh no lasso available bernie's got a replica but he gets blown up good burst damage coming out of secret and that was with rtk nearby he's got the blink ravage may look to fight this one two seconds until blink too much agility mm. gotta respect the damage output there and kuro got him with the big blink echo slam that was without lasso as well lasso now back up for zai as he's gonna tp himself back home yeah, Xiao has been very, very careful, and he's died four times. Burning, I would say, hasn't been as careful, uh, but he's also died four times. It kind of feels like a rare off game for Burning on the Morphling. He's... Yeah, the the mid play on Dazzle, his, he's actually pretty low on farm. He's number four in net worth and significantly behind Shadow Fiend, Razor, and Drow. So, uh, yeah, I, he's, he's not as farm as he could be. Yeah. He's going to get time to catch up, because right now it doesn't look like either team going to be pressuring the high ground. Secret do have the probably better ability to pressure the high ground, should they ever win a fight. They've got Drow with huge physical damage, Razor with the Aghanim Scepter. I imagine this is going to be a great game for a refresher as well in that Razor. Having a double BKB against the Tide Ravages, having double ultimate when you're trying to siege. Big guy just lucked out in no Rosh respawn. It's one and a half minute, right about average. But if it's a 45 second one, I think Secret get that for free or they force a Morphling buyout. So that's really fortunate for Big God. Burning's mistake almost cost them dearly. There's your Roshan respawn. Right now, neither team with any vision up on the map as a result of all these gems. And we will see the lasso come in. ROTK hoping for an anchor or hoping for a Kraken shell soon. He's going to get slowed down by the Frost Arrows. Throws a Ravage, but that gets dealt with by the BKB Secret. In, well, a fantastic position. They're moving forward. Kuro goes in with a blink stun, but Xiao Wei BKBs off the fissure, though, catches two behind. Ice size. He goes down two dead on the big god side, and without ROTK using a buyback, they don't have that secondary ravage. And S4 surviving on tiny bit of HP. Burning now in trouble, gets stunned up. Nope, he dodges it with the waveform. Gem hits the deck as Lich did die there, and the E Blade comes out from Burning. Three heroes dead, and this is where ROTK probably going to be forced to buy back on his Tidehunter. That's the thing about Batrider. They had, they dodged what, like two or three lasso ganks, and then all he has is one. And it doesn't matter what hero, he can get it on Morphling, he can get it at Shadow Feed, he can get it on Tidehunter, and the results still the same. A devastating team fight loss, and a Rax immediately to fall. Well, they're going to hold on to the Tide buyback for now. Burning and Jaw wait, marching forward, looking to kind of deal with this push themselves, but already bottom lane Rax claimed, and there comes your next lasso. It's going to be Jaw wait pulled in, and. He's going to pop like a piñata if he's not careful. The silence comes out. There's your blink. Echo Slam. Kuro with a fantastic dunk. Zhao Wei. Down he goes. Has a buyback available as well. Burning does not want to die here. His morphing strength will barely get himself out of there. As the Kuro Fisher will cover the secret retreat once again. Kuro's Urshiger this game has been on point. Two lassos, two kills. That is rough for Big Guy. They, uh, the Batrider is just causing them so many problems right now. Big God, I feel like, have to get this Aegis now if they can. They haven't got Shadow Fiend alive, though, and that's where it's just a risky play. I think Secret just go in. They yeah. go in a Roche, and if Shadow Fiend buys back, they back off, wait for a Lasso gank, and then proceed to Roche. And Secret is still pretty well equipped to fight here. The Lasso at max level has such a short cooldown. It's going to be just the Earthshaker Echo Slam, which has a long cooldown as far as their ultimates are concerned. Did Tidehunter have Ghost last fight? I don't think he did. No. He, need, he needed the Ghost. I thought he was actually going to Ghost after the Lasso, but he didn't have it. I don't think so, at least. He needed it to to mitigate Drow's damage. He also could have potentially bought back and gone for a second Ravage as well, but he decided to hold on to it. Right after dying, and we're going to see, well, another lasso come in once again. RTK, this time there's going to be a lift coming out from Lamb. The Chain Frost as well, and it's a counter lasso. Lamb pulls the Bat Rider. Ooh, you're fooling now. And Lamb not going to get the kill immediately. Zai's BKB, pretty decent duration. Great Fisher from Kuro. Catches out both the two supports, and Lamb as well as I Size both go down. Looked like a nice play from Lamb. It was uh, pretty flashy, but the end result was not what Big God were hoping for, as that opens up Roshan for the tanking. Man, Xiaowei just respawned. Burning was busy dealing with Arteezy on top, and man, Arteezy died one time in lane. Now 6 1 and 5, just constantly putting pressure in all the lanes without dying. Number one in terms of net worth, always there to follow up to. Um, I mean, 
this is such a difficult game. Burning goes in with the Ravages. Aegis on the ground. Burning going to snatch it. Second Ravage comes in now. Puppy dead to start off the fight. They've lost their Dazzle. No Graves available now, but may not matter. Big God lacking their supports. And Arteezy going for the top racks. He's got the melee. He's got the range. He's going to fight Zhao Wei as well. And Zhao Wei has no defensive capabilities just yet. The second TP will scare off. RTZ, he's going to look to play things safe, but it's burning as well as RTK in all sorts of trouble. Without the Ravages, S4 is just too damn farmed here. He's so far ahead of this Morphling, and with the Eye of the Storm, Burning's completely out of mana. He's going to go down to this S4 Razor, chasing him, gets forced after away. Ice Ice will save his life. Elsewhere, it's ROTK battling it out with Kuro. Kuro forced up to the high ground. In comes your bat, and Zai does what he's done so many times this game, and it's outplay ROTK. <laughs> well... That look that looks like Big God. Their tournament life well, tournament game one life here maybe coming to an end. Is a best of three. Recruitment Souls comes out on S4 and the Gus gets manted off, but right now, Secret with bot lane as well as a melee racks at top taken are in a fantastic position. Even with the Aegis snipe, Big God just don't have much left. It's a fifteen thousand plus net worth lead. At least they preserved the Aegis on Morphling. That was really important. At the same time, Secret, they, they can buy their time. They've been picking and choosing when they want their initiates and just going off the back of Zai's Batrider. Whenever they want to fight, they use it lasso and they cover the map with gem and wards. And if not, then they just play passively and get huge on Draw Ranger and split push and threaten a lot of towers. So they... This game is theirs. Uh, Observer Wars are down, and Ice Ice did end up losing the gem in that recent engage. And that was, I mean, that was a sick... It was two-man play, too. It was like Earthshaker and Batrider dealing with three heroes over there. And even with a huge attempt outplay by Lonham, they just didn't have any of their damage dealers there. Well, looks like Secret now going to look to pick up their next couple of items. Refresher being worked on for your Razor, who's got the Perseverance in hand. I guess other possibility is the Lincoln Sphere, but it, is, it feels like with the BKB and the Eye of the Storm, you just want to go for that Yeah, he doesn't pressure. need Lincolns this game. And Tide going to buy a second gem for Big God here. Recognizing the importance of uh, the map control right now with Secret. For the first time this game, it actually feels like they have some decent vision. Once or they had the one ward above the Roshan for a while, but right now, they see a lot of the Big God movements around the map. All it takes is like one smoke ink, and then Big God is almost done for. Well, Checking be buyback Big God status. Going for the smoke themselves. Not that many people have buybacks. None of the important. I guess uh, Radiance and important heroes yeah. do. All three calls on the secret team, and Kuro actually going to walk in. He does not have buyback. The one hero without buyback on Team Secret going to get picked off. But Arteezy is pressuring down the mid lane, so Big God cannot really commit to the base here. They want more kills out of this, but they've got to get back and defend against the Arteezy Jar Ranger. His decision making throughout this tournament on heroes when split pushing and just his kind of Quote unquote, Rat Dota play in oh, general has been amazing. They BOT mid with Zai too. They're looking for a pickoff on whoever, whoever comes it's back. It's going to be burning. He has not got a replicate up and he has got the Aegis here. Zai may look to just burn it anyways. Nope, decides to blink to the high ground and find an actual kill. Yeah, that that could have been a big play. And again, Secret get a pick or BG get a pick, but they can't do anything with it. Even though they have the Aegis, the split push threat from Arteezy is just too strong in this game. I mean, at this point, Kuro tanking a smoke gank that doesn't lead to any towers going down, and Secret themselves actually taking the T2 tower is almost an okay trade for them. Ooh, Lamb again, the stolen fissure coming into play as RTZ gets scattered in the Radiant Jungle, but that's just a hero that these... Well, these two kind of supports can't really deal with. They'd ideally want to smoke gank RTZ and then push. And they're at RTZ in these fights. Well. Refresher almost going to be picked up here. Just waiting to make sure he has the reliable gold needed for his buyback on S4. And we'll see what the next move for Secret's going to be. Probably want to wait out the Aegis. I feel like you can go for that high ground push, but there's no point trying to do it while the, the Aegis is on the morph lane. Yeah, it's just simply too risky. They have 45 seconds that they need to wait. That's almost nothing in the span of this entire game. Zai, it looks like, with the Shivers guard completed, something gets an Oblivion staff, so we may see a second Refresher Orb coming out on Team Secret. One I'm lasso, not enough, let's go for a second. Yeah. I guess BKB plus Shivas is really strong. He's not going to die in BKB. Hmm. Oh, Shadowfiend finally has some damage now, with the Crystalis and the Mantis Isle up. However... I mean, there's just some heroes that aren't very useful right now. Like, Earthshaker is still really, really useful. I feel like Lich is... Lich's usefulness is almost none. 
Now frost armor, I mean eight armor in the grand scheme of things, not that much mitigation. Well, he just reclaimed as Tide goes blinking in, has not been spotted just here. He's gonna walk right into Zai here. The BKB immediately popped, even beats the Insta Fisher from Lamb. ROTK wants to maybe go in, but a blink available from Zai and ROTK. Blink gush. Gonna be all that he has for the time being. His backup is pretty far away. ROTK, please. Secret supports just skill a lot better. You're talking about like a weave. How, how strong is that compared to Frost Armor from Lich? It, it yeah. is like so much stronger. And then, of course, the Blink Echo from Earthshaker. These are much better than like the Rubik and the Lich's impact. So that's why Secret's able to win the majority of these four on fives, even with RTC split pushing. Secret now smoked up. They see ROTK. Are they going to go on him and try burst him down? You take him out of the picture, pushing high ground becomes a whole lot easier without those Ravages. He does but... have buyback. They're going to see Ice Ice as well on the Lich. They're going to start with a Fisher. The Lasso actually comes out on Burning. Can they bring him down? He does not have ages. Nice Ravage comes in. The second Ravage now as well. RTK hitting everyone. They bring down Drow Ranger and the Earthshaker. S4 BKB up. Has the Eye of the Storm going. Trying to fight out Burning here. Stealing some decent damage. But even with plus 300 damage, he still can't fight. He's going to be brought down. It's ROTK Tidehunter showing up when it matters. Here on day four. Hitting some big Ravages. And holy cow. That is a... Like 6.5k gold swing. Man, Goes Secret was gone. so good about preemptively popping their BKBs every fight except for that one. Yeah. Only Razor got his BKBs off, and I think Bats were maybe on cooldown from the previous little skirmish in the jungle. But, but the big one is Arteezy. One small mistake by him cost them a big team fight. Still, they are one or one and a half sets of racks ahead. Make that two sets of racks. Yep. Top range racks goes down, and... More than anything, though, a lot of good farm goes Burning's way. It will help him get that next big item up on the Morphling. And for now, Zhao Wei actually pushing down the mid lane. Has to be very careful. Lasso already has come back up, and I don't think this is really a easy push for Big God to go for. No Morphling with them. He's back up top lane, and they have to co constantly deal with pressure. Coming in bottom lane, coming in top lane, these super creeps are... Going to give them issues, not just as far as pushing out lanes, but also just going to slow down their item progression when they're not getting as much money for all this farm. They're fighting against a lot of split push pressure. It's not only the Rax creeps, it's also RTZ just split pushing with Mantis style and Marksmanship illusions. And on top of that, it's the precision aura. So like these three factors just constantly shove um, Big God's lanes into close to their uh, close to their high ground. Jow8 checks Roche. Hasn't been eight minutes yet, buddy. Close. Oh, could be coming up any second now. As far as uh, if Big God can get the next Aegis and Cheese, they, they are down four racks, but is this still a, a fairly winnable game for them, or are they kind of relying too much on a, a secret misplay? It's still winnable. I, I still think, like, Blink Ravage is huge. Also, the EB damage from Morphling is massive now. He doesn't have buyback at this point, which is a little risky, uh, but he did go for an MKB so he can focus down Drow Ranger. So now Drow Ranger's a little bit vulnerable, but he, he doesn't have a BKB, so he can still get locked down by, let's say, an Echo Slam. Like Echo Slam and Chant Fissure, that's like five seconds of disables for him. Yeah, and even even if he tries to morph strength there, the the burst damage is just gonna yeah out DPS it. So the, I think the key point in this fight is to eliminate Earthshaker. He doesn't have a BKB. He does have a Yules, which is somewhat problematic for big gods. But if they catch him in Ravage, he should die very very quickly. And he I I think he's the most important hero to kill. I mean Bat Rider is important to kill, but how are you going to outplay this fat Bat Rider with 2,000 HP and 23 armor, BKB, double BKB, double four staff? Like he shouldn't get. He shouldn't die, even if cut out. But the Earthshaker, he's really squishy. Six armor. Um, and they also have to catch him without the weave, I would say. Since a lot of their damage is physical. I mean, I guess they have like Requiem and EB that's, and whatnot. That's why, uh, as you mentioned earlier, both secret supports, very high impact late game supports. But their kind of impact versus how easy they are to kill is where they are the prime targets. Because both Dazzle and Earthshaker are very vulnerable with their, uh, their current items. Big God gonna smoke up. This is their last smoke for some time. About 10 minutes gonna run right into Karu. Does get insta fissured again. This fissure oh, wow. with zero cast time. I don't know why he's standing work. right there. He the, Look at their wards. They have wards pretty much covering everywhere but where he is. Oh. Like he's standing right here. The ward vision is like circling like here and here and here. And he's standing in that blind spot. And they, they smoke for him, but honestly, I don't think it would have mattered if they didn't smoke. And that's right before the Roshian spawn. That's a very costly death. Now Xiao Wei walking into the Roche pit just five seconds before the spawn. A weave comes out, and now they know. 
Oh, they're going to scout out Roshan. Now they do see S4 as well. Here comes your shotgun. Going to force out the S4 BKB. Lasso on the burning. The Ravage not going to hit. Goes for a second lasso. ROTK can he refresh? Doesn't look like he's got it. Morphin goes down. S4 not going to survive this one. ROTK still alive for the time being. He gets flame breaked away. And Zai going to get killed before he can kill ROTK. ROTK do not walk in the fire. Whatever you do, he blinks to the low ground. Will get out. Meanwhile, RTZ doing, well, rat TZ things as... He's going to look to force out the glyph in the mid lane. Chain Frost used on Manta style illusions. Why the hell not at this point? Will also help deal with the creep wavers. Roshan. Oh, they see, actually see Arteezy with the Observer Ward. I wonder if they're going to mm. try to make a play. I guess they don't have any catch. They they've do have got Ravage. One Ravage. They've got the Fissure on Rubik. As I think they've got the Fissure still on Rubik. Did He's they recover the gem? Okay, Rubik, oh, Rubik has ROTK's gem. Oh, Lamb would love to still have. That, uh, that Fissure, which has done so much work this game. Well, let's see what the next move's going to be. Shadowfiend picks up some Boots of Travel for extra mobility. He is effectively 6-slotted. And Rubik as well. Boots of Travel all over. We'll see what they can do with this. RTC, he is soloing Roshan. It's going down quickly. There's a Ravage, though. They've got to do this fast. Tidehunter coming in and coming in fast. They have got the high ground vision with the Observer Ward, but Roshan gets claimed. Kuro walks in, gets the Aegis. Cheese on the Puppy. They want RTZ, though. Not going to be able to get him right away. Blink in from Tide and the full staff out from Kuro. Gets stuck on the high ground, though. Second full staff from Puppy will help him out. That was a very high risk play from Secret, but does not get punished. They did have the vision to help protect them, and Big God at this point in the game out of smokes. Wow. Again, the the split push threat is just so strong. They're, they see Arteezy. There's like two heroes dead, two important heroes, mind you. Oh. Razor and Batrider, and still Arteezy's managed to pressure to T3 and get Roshan. Needs to go Scepter Lamb. Actually gets away with the full stuff and Zhao Wei gonna just right click down Artur. Wow. That Observer Ward in the jungle, just not the first time we've seen it scout at RTZ. This is the first time though that they punish him for being aggressive there in the jungle. I you can't really, I feel like this is one of those times where sure RTZ dies, it looks bad, but you look at how much damage he's done with his split push, eventually he's gonna get caught out. Eventually he's gonna be punished. As far as Secret's concerned, more often than not, those kind of plays have actually panned out for them. But this is a really risky time to die. This is 55 minutes in, and they don't have an Aegis on the Drow Ranger. They actually pass the Aegis to Kiroki, which I actually think is the right play, because he's he's been the main focus for each of these fights. They know if they kill him, a lot of their lockdown and damage is gone. They and see Kuro, by the way. One Observer Ward wasn't enough. They see him once more. He's got four stuff and Yules, and will get himself out of there. Mm. I think they could have. They could have at least countered his blink, but he can. I guess he can use like full stuff to the low ground, use himself, and probably blink out. It's but. still worth it. Like if they kill Kiro right now, he does not have buyback. I, I don't know if they can kill him twice, but they can try. Yeah. Well, Shiva's guard now picked up for your Tiger to negate a lot more of that physical damage. Is Kuro now in position to kind of deal with this push? A blink lasso in. Jawe is the target for this one. Can they bring him down fast enough? Lasso was stolen by your Rubik. Is he going to find an opening to use this one? They lose Zhao 8 in the front line, though, and that's signal to retreat. Immediate buyback comes in from your shadow thing. He can boot to travel in. Zai wants more. He gets the, well, gets a Ravage off. Echo Slam from Kuro catches out two. He will pay the price, but that's an Aegis. He's going to respawn any second now, and here comes Arteezy. Second Ravage comes out, catches out Zai. S4 BKBs it off and burning. Low and HP will not get this kill. There's a Grey coming out onto Zai. They lose the Morphling. Lich dead as well, and this is where Secret go. Pushing down middle lane. Yule's going to cancel IRTK's blink to get stunned up. And S4 will say, easy peasy. He's focusing on the creeps, doesn't even go for ROTK. This is looking like the end of game one of this best of three. Oh. That, that was not what Big Guy had in mind. They wanted to force out Drow's buyback. That's what they actually wanted. And instead, Zai comes in and dares him to push high ground and manages to take down a couple of key heroes. Morphling, no buyback, tight SF under. is oh, dead no. a second time. This is a dieback from Zhao Wei. He's going to BKB, but the right-click damage is going to be too much for him, it looks like. Kuro's there with a fissure block, and down goes your SF. Lamb, the only one left standing, has a lasso, won't get a chance to use it. GG is called. Game one goes to Team Secret. 57 and a half minutes. It was a close one. The comeback felt like it was online for Big God, but... Big God's third resilience is really impressive, and Secret's decision making when pushing high ground and defending high ground, I, I think, is unrivaled. Uh, and Big God, they, they make the mistake of pushing high ground too pre prematurely. I mean, who can fault them for that? Though? It's like, yeah. okay, we finally got to pick off Andrea, who's been a thorn in our side the entire game. We pick her off, we finally can get our lanes pushed out, and then we can take a Rax. And 
Zion, the bat rider, fantastic play from him. Also, Artizi, I would say those two played amazingly. Yeah. It seemed Big God got a bit ahead of themselves. Like, even with those pickoffs, they had to maybe wait for Morphling to get another item. Burning was just never really seemed to have too much of an impact in the fights. Every fight, I looked at him, I'm like, oh, he's on a quarter HP. He's just trying to escape and not die. Zai, as you mentioned, probably one of the MVPs of this game. He got so much done on the Batrider. Kuro's Oshaker as well. Got to highlight his plays that game. It was on point every time. I think Burning might have needed a BKB at some point. Like, Manta's usually decent, but versus an Earthshaker, I, yeah. I don't really think it's that good. They stunned them from so long, from Lasso into, like, a chain stun from Earthshaker, and Earthshaker can sacrifice his life for Morphlings, and if you saw Shout 8, Shout 8, he's not that tanky because uh, he doesn't have more, but he still, he gets BKB off. He survives for the most part in each of these fights. If he has a BKB, it means, like, at that last fight where Xiao gets pulled in, Morphling can actually wave in aggressively BKB and try and fight a bit, perhaps, but... They got owned by the right clicks. So much minus yeah. armor. They also, I also feel like he should have gotten an AC instead of a MKB. On the Morphling? Or a Butterfly. Yeah. yeah, I think he needed more armor and mitigation. He, it's not like he had a problem doing damage, because they have Grave. Again, he has to outlast the fights, not be able to just burst people down really quickly, because yeah. they're too quick on their BKBs, and the Shallow Grave is reactively was too good for burning. All right, well, Game 1 goes to Team Secret. We're going to go back to the studio panel to discuss and break down Game 1 of Secret versus Big God. What a game. What a game. <laughs> I need to drink some water. Um, it really had everything. It started with uh, a weird offensive try lane from Vici Gaming that we all were like, this is not going to work. Vici Gaming? Big oh. gods. Different B. V, B. Or are you saying all Chinese players are the same, Bruno? <laughs> exactly. That's exactly what I'm saying. Racist. Ah, totally. Absolutely. Uh, but yeah, it started with Every a, a day try lane. the same thing. You never learned. Oh, yeah. Morphling, Sorry. Rubik, Lich. Could you believe that was going to be an aggressive try lane that was going to work? Uh, no, that laning phase was weird for a couple of reasons. The try lane that they ran, I was not expecting. I thought they were going to mm. put Lich Morphling mid, but honestly, I can't really fault uh, Big God for what they did, because the laning stage went, I mean, surprisingly okay <laughs> with that try lane. The other yeah. two lanes got destroyed. It looked like they might went okay. lose the other two lanes and like at best just not feed yeah. in the try lane. I, I think if Secret don't lose their try lane, so let's see, they get first blood before the rune spawn yes. on the Shadow Fiend, and S4 gets it on his Razor. The Razor versus Shadow Fiend is already a good matchup, and he has first blood. That's That lane is just one already. Yep. Then Zai yep. solo kills RTK twice in the top That lane. is the funny thing. We were talking about, how's this? Oh, this should be pretty even, you know? Bat Riders can't kill the Tie Hunter. Tie Hunter will zone. Oh, wait. Tie Hunter is losing. But Drowara. That lane is that really Drawara. hard. And ROTK misplayed a little he bit. He took way too much oh. damage on the first wave because he yeah. missed his last hit. So then with the sticky napalm, you're slowed. So then he goes back in to f hit the creep, takes like five extra auto attacks from the bat, mm. has to salve on wave one. That's too early. Yeah. That's pretty bad. And uh, if you imagine Secret also not losing the try lane then, yeah. that game would have been a quick 20 minutes. 30 minutes yeah. maybe. Quick game. But the try lane went wrong. Kuro left the lane. Arteza got caught out and died. Then Puppy died. Yep. Then Kuro came in and traded kills with Lich. So I got a 3 for 1 in the try versus try lane. And it goes to show how much Secret were winning the other lanes that they lost their try versus try and they were still hit by 2,000 gold in minute 4. Like, and, and then it <laughs> looked like the, the tides were going to turn because you walk into the mid game where Secret died repeatedly on the the Drow Ranger, I believe, and S4 yep. even died once or twice, so their BKBs, which were super important in that game, were delayed. They're up against Ravage, Chain Frost, Shadow Fiend, E-Blade on Morphling, like, mass magic damage. And the BKBs were quite slow, considering how f hot the team started. So, it looked like they're going to be able to take Roche, start taking towers, really control the map, and kind of restrict Secret, but they made a few misplays. Secret had some really good pickoffs, and to me, like, I go back to the draft... They first picked Batrider this game as a reply to the first overall pick from BG, and I think Batrider really proved his worth. To me, the main reason they won. Without the Batrider, if you have some other initiator, you don't get those clean pickoffs. RTK is going to end up getting off better ravages. Your team's not pulled into bad positions, and I think BG probably take those late-game team fights, if not for the bat. And Burning also didn't have his best showing. I think if he plays, so it was he didn't play very poorly. I would say on the on the morphling, he had a couple of mistakes that were uncharacteristic. But the thing is, when you put burning on on the morphling like that, and he gets the start he did in the lane, mm -hmm. you just expect him to pull through. And the the mistakes he made during the game would perhaps seem fairly common to other good morphling players, but it's we're expecting world class out of burning. 
uh, not going into the tournament because we didn't know how much they would practiced, but he proved himself so many times in this tournament now that he needs to play his absolute best. This is a very important game against Secret, and if you take those three deaths away that I think he could have avoided, just way over-aggressive, yep. he might have had another full item. He had 15k net worth when the Shadow Fiend had 20. They could have been par on par. The first one, I mean, the one that really stands out to me is the one where he had just gotten E-Blade. He sees Puppy, and he waves just to get in range for an Adaptive Strike Shotgun. Level which, 2. But it was, two. And we're like, huh, that did no damage. Was he Strength Morph? No, it was a no, level, level two, 2 Adaptive yeah. Strike. Yeah. Just a little bit over aggressive, and he didn't have to do so much. They had a mm. really strong team fight lineup, and I feel they had a strong dual core as well. The, that in that game, he he would actually be better, maybe to even get like the Manta as his first item, since it helps with the silence, which is some thing that caused him to die the first two or three times. So you think like an earlier BKB could have been a choice no, for him? No, I mean the Manta would... Manta would first. Yeah. Manta because you want to the e yeah. Yeah. first. It's something that we don't see out of Morphlings too much, but I, I guess with the great early game that he, he was He didn't having. even get any pickoffs with the Morph with the e yeah. early. I mean the e -blade ended up not being a good choice, right? Yeah. Because he got no pickoffs with it, and he tried to play more aggressive because he had gotten it, feeling like he had to get something done. So in hindsight, it didn't work, but... Yeah, yeah Manta could have maybe been a better choice And there. He's, the weird thing for me is that he seems to do it every game. Yeah, I, I it, think it's so. worked for him other games. Yeah. To be fair, so it's not like he's buying E Blade and it's like failing every game. But this game just didn't work. It just seems a little bit, based on how the game was going and how their strategy worked, it seems a little bit too like once again autopilot for me. It's like, oh, I'm playing Morphling, I'm doing well, I get E Blade as always. Where mm -hmm. if you looked at what what direction the game was going in, the Bat Rider was a big problem. He did not itemize against him. Their lineup was built to team fight, not to skirmish, and he gets the skirmish item on the on the Morphling. Where I Are think the, the combat build could have really worked. Uh, yes, I'm in the lobby. So. Okay. Yeah, I don't know. I th I think that I I want to say for the first time in any big god game I've seen this tournament, I think Burning was the one that needed yeah. to be carried, and the team couldn't do it. And I mean, speaking of carrying, I do have to say, Lanham played an exceptional Ooh. Rubik this yes. game. Oh my god, stole Fissure like a billion times, lifts and lifts the Bat Rider, then steals the last zone, starts <laughs> dragging the other way at the end of the game. He steals the Dazzle Weave, Weave multiple times, the steals grave. the Grave. He played out of his mind on the Rubik, and I yeah. think was one of the biggest reasons why they stayed in this game. Mm -hmm. I also have to say RTK, yeah, he got caught out a couple of times by Lasso, but overall he played pretty well. I don't feel like RTK was a big weak link for the team. The laning stage wasn't the best, but he recovered pretty well heading into the mid-game. I think RTK shows his weakest side whenever he's encountering a 1v1 situation. There was a, a moment where he found Zeiss but Ryder, and Zeiss outplayed him entirely. He was trying to trade. He actually had the damage. He could have at least made Zai back, but Zai just knew exactly what he was doing and, and solo kills our OTK. But when he's in a team fight situation, outside of, I mean, yeah, he had the Ravages game, but if you forget about that game specifically, uh, he's been very on point and he is a guy that has landed proper uh, Ravages his game, so nothing to blame from him, really. You know, it, this is yet another game where it feels like Secret I don't think it was their game plan, but it ends up being that a lot of what wins them the game is just Rat Dota. Split pushing the map, if you're BG, what, do you guys think that that concerns you? Should it change the way you're drafting? Maybe do you prioritize the bat yeah, rider? You're going to have first pick this when game. We've been talking about that as well. Like I was actually expecting the first game in this series to be a sort of a five man. Like it's it's going to be a good game. If it doesn't work, it's the first game. Then you move on. Like, but they didn't do it in the first game. What if BG goes for that five man strat? Like, do we see any? Do you see any potential for? I think they ran a Luna strat the other oh, day. Oh, no, yesterday they yesterday. were they the were Shadow Shaman support. The Shadow Shaman support and like the push. I don't know if they feel desperate because this was definitely a winnable game for them, even after how bad it started. Yeah. But I think if you run that into Bat Rider Shaker yeah. as yeah, the opening is. two, that's super scary. Yeah. Yeah. Though they, they, they will have first it. pick, I believe. So they could go for the Bat. Oh, first yeah, yeah, for this game, sure. I don't, mm. think, I don't know if they're going to get the Bat. I think Secret will probably ban it first phase. Mm -hmm. We'll see what happens after the break. For now, we're going to take five minutes. When we come back, we will have game two of Big God versus Team Secret. Team Secret leading 1-0. If they win, they will have to face their old rivals, EG. See you in a bit.